Today, we're gonna do a camera comparison between the Sony Xperia 1.5 versus the iPhone 14 Pro. So I have a lot to say about the Sony Xperia phone since this is my first time actually using it. First, I'm gonna say this phone is probably not ideal for the regular consumer because they will probably hate it. It's not because of the image quality, but it's more of the camera UI. This phone is more for the ones who are ca camera savvy, who already owns a Sony camera and knows how to use a Sony camera. And because of the complexity of the camera experience, it was like using two different cameras while doing this camera comparison, even though they are both camera phones. Meaning that as I'm using the Sony phone, my mindset is like, I'm technically using a point and shoot camera, which is a pro and a con at the same time, depending on the user. So let's move on to the camera samples. For the colors, of course, it's personal preference, but from my eyes, I would say the Sony does represent more realistic colors or more neutral colors, whereas on iPhone, sometimes it's a bit too, too yellow, sometimes too green, especially when the sun's out, it, it could be more warm, which some people may like, but if you want a more neutral color or like closer to the eye, the Xperia phone seems to be more consistent with that. For HDR photos and videos, the iPhone is more consistent. You can see more in the shadows and the highlights are more controlled. Whereas on a, a Sony Xperia phone, most of it seems to be pretty dark or the shadows are usually darker. Now that could be a good or bad thing depending on who you are. As a regular general consumer, I feel like they want the HDR photo even though it kind of look over-processed. They do want to see everything. And it's also very simple. They don't have to edit or post edit just to, to see more in the darkness or like bring down the brightness. They just want to show their friends and just take a simple picture. Whereas on a Sony phone, even though the pictures and videos are generally darker, especially in the shadows, people might like the darker shadow look. It looks a bit more realistic and obviously whatever is in the shadows should be darker. And assuming that if you do have a Sony phone, you are probably a photographer or a videographer who understands how to edit pictures and get it how they want it to. And from my opinion, I feel like the pictures coming out of the Sony feels closer to a camera. Whereas on an iPhone, it does look like a typical phone camera where it just looks a bit more processed. And you can really see more of that happening once you're at the telephoto range from 3x all the way up to max zoom, which is about 15x. So at max zoom, you'll probably see more of the noise happening, the artifacts coming out on the iPhone. Whereas on a Sony, yeah, it's more blurry. It doesn't have that sharpening effect happening, which you may not mind if you are a photographer or videographer. But if you do have that mindset of just want a phone that's easy to use, wants to look good no matter what, then maybe the iPhone or any general phone is the better choice because you just want something simple, easy to use and share right away. You don't wanna do all the extra work because you're just using your phone. And if you wanna do anything crazy, you know you're just gonna grab your camera. Moving on to low light, I was expecting the Sony to be super dark in a lot of these pictures, but it's not too dark to the point where it's like you can't see anything, but dark enough or contrasty enough where it does look more realistic than the iPhone. And also as I'm zooming in to take these pictures, especially if there's a big light source, on the iPhone, for some reason, it kind of makes the whole image faded. Whereas on a Sony, the contrast is still there, making it look like it's cleaner. Now it's not always clean on a Sony because for some reason the IS doesn't seem like it's as good as the iPhone when you're zoomed in. You can see more shakes happening and it's trying to compensate for that therefore leading it to more of a blurrier image. But at max zoom at 15x it is cleaner. You can see a lot less noise and less of the artifacts floating around. For portrait mode, they both can do 1x, 3.5 and 5.2 on the Sony, and 2x and 3x on the iPhone. I think having a 2x is great for the everyday use. It's in between 1x and 3x, and it doesn't look too wide. On the Sony, you do have 5.2x, which I think it's too zoomed in, especially if you're indoors, so you will have some limited use for that. Now, one thing's pretty annoying with Sony is that when I check the photo to see if the framing's right and then go back to take another portrait picture, it goes back to the auto mode, which is pretty annoying because I would have to swipe back and go back to portrait mode every single time. And another annoying thing is that there's no visual or haptic feedback when I'm pressing on the shutter button to let me know I'm taking the picture or the picture is taken because when I'm out there in the sun, it's hard to see the screen sometimes and I don't, I just need a more visual indication to let me know that I actually took a picture. 
And there are some cool things like it has its own shutter button. So it feels like I'm actually using a camera. You can actually half press to, to like focus on things and then full press to take the picture. I will say it's harder to use if you're taking pictures or videos in portrait mode because your palm might be pressing on it and as at the same time you're pressing on the shutter button, it might not work. Now I'm going to show you the camera UI to show you how kind of confusing it is for a general consumer because most of these icons are from Sony cameras. So if you already own one, you are familiar with these icons and you know what they do. But as a person who never touched a camera before, especially a Sony camera, they will be super confused. And also you got three different camera modes, the cinema, video, and photo, so it would be even more confused. So if you don't know anything about video or cinema, then it's going to be very hard for you to use this phone. But if you are in this field, it's nice to be able to have something in your pocket all the time just to do like a test shoot or just reference shots. So you don't have to bring your big cinema camera or even your full frame camera with you. And as you can tell, shooting in Cinema Pro, you do have the black bars on top and bottom making it look more cinematic or like a movie. And also with the different color profiles where this one is more flat which a lot of filmmakers would probably like so they can color grade it later and another thing i noticed is the stabilization is not as good as video pro or the photography pro app which maybe makes sense because with cinema you will probably have it on a rig or a tripod now moving on to the video pro app which is nice to be able to see the millimeters or focal length and have the slider to adjust to zoom in and out instead of like 1x or 5x or 3x and it's nice to be able to see that zoom and control it while you're shooting video so with this phone, if you know you're vlogging or just shooting a video throughout the whole entire day, it's nice to be able to go into that specific video app to have video friendly features or UI as you're taking video. And also you're not being confused if you're in photo mode or video mode and switching it back and forth all the time. Now within the photo app, you can switch to video like any other phone. And that's also the default app when you double press the power button. And I'm sure by now you can tell the ultra wide on the Sony is not as wide as the iPhone. And the difference is in HDR, which I mentioned a lot throughout the video. Now, if you do like the more blurry background, just with no portrait mode, I would say the Sony does have the bigger sensor look, mostly from taking pictures or videos up close to something. Now shooting low light, I feel like HDR is really helpful here where on iPhone, you can see a lot of things exposed, the highlights from the windows and the darker spots from the top of the buildings. Whereas on the Sony, it's like black and white. And when you go into darker spots where there's less light, I realized that the Sony is pretty noisy if you look up in the sky. So it may be not the best video shooter when you're in low light. Another feature the Sony has is their Cinetone, which makes things more flat so you can just color grade it later. Another cool thing on a Sony is when you're taking selfies, you do have a confirmation where your face is in focus by seeing that box. So that is the comparison between these two phones and luckily I do or use Sony cameras. So I feel like I had a handicap learning how to use the Sony Xperia 1.5. I don't think I would ever recommend a Sony to my parents or someone who does not know how to use a camera like I do. I feel like the Sony Xperia phones are great for the ones who are photographers or videographers who don't like the look of general phone cameras. And if you want to leave your camera at home and take something more mobile, then the Xperia phone seems like will give you the closest results to your camera. So let me know your thoughts about these two phones. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.